Hello Multiverse, uh, welcome to Omniverse Gamers. I am Damien Bizzio. Today's video is about preparation and how much you should have prepped for your session. Now I get this question a lot, how much do you prepare, how much should I prepare, what do you what do you need to have at the table to be ready to dungeon master? Now this is nothing to do with world building, this is about running your session, not world building is a whole other part of preparation. It is an important part of preparation, but it's this is dealing with table sessions and how to show up at your table and be ready to run a fairly fun session with the most least amount of work you can possibly do. So there's two parts of preparation. I run games on a two week cycle. So I have kind of a system where I have, I have my ideas and I have my practical physical things that I need. So you need some ideas, obviously. So things you need for session ideas are like your locations, your NPCs, your um, some some basic counter encounter ideas. You know, maybe the the goals of the encounter and the uh, the physical assets you're going to need to run that encounter, the uh, the environment, how you're going to represent that environment. Just ideas about how you're going to present that to the to your players, basically. And then what I like to have is like two to six monster ideas, always kind of in the works in my head. Now you don't, however many you think you're going to need, it depends on how you play. I I like to prepare minimal. I'm a minimal preparer. I run like four or five games right now that are pretty regular. So I have a really, really streamlined system for make for preparing for a session. And what I do is I have, I'm prepared for the least amount that I'm ever going to need, plus three. It's called my, my plus three technique. And we'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so for ideas, say, like, say my, say, uh, say you're running all day. You're running your session all day. You know you're going to have three or four combats, which is rare. Like We usually have one combat per night. We run three-hour sessions. We usually have one massive combat per night, sometimes two. Which that, that's not, that doesn't happen as much. I like the, I like the power game these days. I, do, I, do, I prepare for three-hour sessions. But you can still do that. In a, in a, say you're going to play for eight hours. You're not really going to play for three hours. You're going to mess around. You're going to talk. You're going to chit-chat. You're going to get six hours of solid play in, basically. So you're going to need stuff for six hours of play. Now... Depending on the game you run, you might be heavy combat heavy, you might be roleplay heavy, you don't need as many combats, you might need more NPCs. An encounter is not just a physical encounter, it's also like the NPCs you interact with, the, the plot lines you kind of develop, the uh, the interactions they're going to have, and the plots they're going to develop from those interactions, which is a whole other thing we're going to talk about. Player agency, player driven plots versus DM driven plots, that's, a, that's another video. Um, so for my sessions, I know I'm going to go into most sessions. I need at most two encounters. Usually it's just one big one, but sometimes I like I like to be I like to I like to prepare for two just in case. You never know. Sometimes things go fast depending on how many players you have. I run anywhere from three to seven players. Sometimes eight players. That's obviously with eight players, one combat's going to be an hour, two hours, which is long. Which you can there's ways to make that more fun. That's that then that, you don't really about worry really, don't worry about the length of combat. Worry about the fun of combat. That's a whole other video I'm going to make too. In the future, um, so what I know, I need, I need, I know, I need one encounter. So I'm going to think about what are they going, what are they going to encounter? What, are, what kind of environment are they going to meet? What, what kind of goals do the monsters have that I'm going to have them, or the, or the, or the bandits, or enemies, monsters, enemies, whatever you want to call it? What are their motivations going to be? And why is this encounter happening? So I spend the first week of my prep just kind of milling that around in my head. I don't do anything concrete. I just think about where they might go. What, what the encounter would be there, what the what the environment would be, what um, and then I start to once I have that in my brain, I'll think about well, what monsters would go to that environment, or what monsters do I want them to to uh, to go up against? And you can do that in reverse. You can start with oh, there's this really cool monster I saw in the monster manual. I want my players to go up against this. So you start kind of thinking the ideas of that monster. Where would he be based on where the players are? How do I get my monster in? How do I make an encounter? surrounding this monster. So you can go both ways with that. You can start with an encounter and add your monster in, or you can start with a monster and build the encounter around that monster. It works both ways, and actually I would suggest doing both all the time, because as you go back and forth, you'll have an encounter, you're like, well, I like this encounter, I want to have this, you know, bugbears in it, but now bugbears don't really fit in this encounter, so maybe I'll add, you know, something, I'll add, you know, something different. I'll add some gnolls in here, because they're a little more, a little bit more uh, primal and violent, and this, that fits this encounter. But then, as you were thinking about bugbears originally, now you have a basis now well what would work with bugbears kind of kind of spread out from don't ever waste anything anything you think about keep track of it keep it in a notepad i have in my phone i have a little little note i just write little notes anytime i think of something i just write it because my phone's always on me so just oh, let's write a little notepad oh this this you know oh this no it'd be cool if this no had like one leg and he wanted to come steal their leg just because he's 
he's jealous of legs. That, that's a stupid concept, but you can make a whole encounter based on that. You, you know, go for it. Just little ideas like that you see, or if you're watching a movie, and like, oh, that's really that sword attack was really cool. I want to have a weapon, an enemy that can just come through and cut everyone right in half. That's my major attack that I'm going to base my encounter on, and just kind of go from there. Whatever you get, whatever your initial inspiration is, start from that basically for your encounters. So then, as you're doing that, so as I was going back back to what I was saying about, I know I'm only going to need one encounter, maybe two. For my prep, because I can run five games now, and there's a reason I can run five games right now, I'm always three encounters and three monsters ahead of what I need. So I know I'm going to need one monster and one encounter, say, on Friday night. I have four of them ready to go. I have four encounters ready to go. Because some of my games, my, my Friday night game is on a rail, so I know where it's going to go, but some of my West March games and some of my, my player-driven games, I really don't know where they're going to go. They're going to they're gonna go in seven different directions. But... I'm okay with that because I have, not only do I have one encounter prepared, I have four encounters ready to go. I'm three ahead and I have three extra monsters that I know I might need them, I might not need them, but I have them ready to go. So if they go somewhere I don't wasn't prepared for, I'm always prepared. I always have something I can take out of my binder and just insert into this game and just, yeah, that was part of the game the whole time. How do they know? They don't know. You're making it up. There's no difference between you making it up before and you making it up right at the table. There's no difference play-wise. And the benefit of that is you don't have to, because some people over-prepare. I know some people, oh, they'll world build for like six months. I'm building this great epic world and it's going to be awesome. And it probably will be awesome. But as you're doing that, you're not prepping for the table. You're building a world, which is great. But world building does not help you run sessions. S running sessions can help you world build. It, it kind of, you know, I'm not saying don't world build. If you love it, do it, do it. But if you have your strap for time, Less is more. Less can be more as far as that. So for ideas, obviously you need location where you think they... I always try to do a three... I think about... So my, my, my rule of three, so I think about where my players are right now. They, I think about the three different directions they could go. Obviously there's, they can go anywhere, but no matter where they go, you can adjust the encounter. It was, this was, this was going to be a null encounter. It's supposed to be in the east, but now they're going west. Oh, crap. Well, I guess cause if, if, you, if, you see, if, you, if you world build and you have a map and you're set into this big detailed map... You're kind of stuck with that map. If you don't have a world map, if you're just kind of if they're exploring as they go, oh, they were going to go to the west where I thought the gnolls were going to be. Now they're going east. Well, maybe I guess the gnolls live in the east now. Or well, maybe maybe my encounter doesn't need gnolls. Now I'm going to have lizard men in the swamp instead of gnolls in the in the forest. Same encounter, same terrain, like sweeping terrain ideas. Just kind of mold it to a swamp as opposed to a forest. Swap out gnolls for the for the for the lizard men because I remember I have four monsters ready to go. I can easily just swap them out. And if you see my other videos about changing um, ballot bounded accuracy rules, you can you can send any monster against any party. Even though I maybe I planned this monster for my ninth level party, but now that I'm facing a fourth level party, I can easily just adjust that. That's that's, that's simple. It's more about monster concept, what they can do, their cool abilities, how they use the terrain, what the terrain, how is the terrain going to change during this battle? Like if you're in a forest, maybe you're fighting a hill giant who's just going to start ripping apart trees. So yeah, you had cover. Now these trees are being ripped out of the ground and thrown at you. So covers being just thrown out the, out the out the out the way, but then other covers going to appear as you dodge a tree. Now you're behind a tree. Now you have more cover. So the next tree that comes at you, you can maybe duck or think about how terrain. Think of terrain as another enemy. You have your enemy, you have your main enemy. You can have your little enemies, your minions, whatever, and then you have your terrain. Those are three parts of any encounter. And we'll I'll, I'll make some videos about encounters and stuff like that. How I how I make really interesting encounters that way. So yeah, you're gonna need. Three encounter ideas, like they have to get across the cave, they have to get through this cave to the other side to get to the door that leads to the upper to the upper edge of the castle. That's that's the that's what they have to do. What you put in front of them, say you have spiders in the room. Spiders maybe don't care. If they don't if you don't get in their territory, they're not gonna bother the players. The players can walk right through there nice and quiet, not disturb those spiders. That's cool. They see the spiders, it's a threat, but they're not that that's that's an encounter. You don't have to fight everything you see. Everything you, you Every encounter does not have to be a fight, unless your players want to fight things. If they see want, want to see see kill, go for it. Let them let them go and see kill. I like to I like to give every every encounter two different things going on. So I would say have that cave with the spiders on the wall, and so the players see those. But then there's also this dark. He's like he's a, like a snake made of darkness, and they can't really see him unless he moves. So they don't even know he's there. They're just they're just dealing with the spiders until they do something that disrupts the snake. And then now, oh crap, there's this invisible snake. He just bit one of us or he's wrapped around my leg. Now you have extra, now your encounter is twofold. Do I, the spiders are still there just kind of chilling. Now the snake's a problem. And as you go to fight the snake, 
you might disturb the spiders, or, or maybe not. So now you have a dynamic encounter, basically. So that's where I can use my two monsters that I have ready to go. I have four, so I can use one, two. I always, so I have two monsters, now I know I'm going to need three more. I always have, so I have five monsters prepared in case they go somewhere else. I have three extras. And if I don't use those three tonight, say in this today session, I'm still three ahead. So for, so for my next session on Sunday, I make one more monster, maybe two. I still have those three ready to go. Or I can take one of those three. Oh, I'm going to use this guy because I really wanted to use those and I didn't get to use them in this one game. So I'm going to use these maybe in the next session of that game. I can mold it. Or, well, I'm going to use this on, on my other game on Sunday. I can just kind of update it and maybe add a different minion to it. And so having three monsters ahead is always a good idea. Now you can use monsters right out of the monster manual. I like to manipulate my monsters a little bit. But whatever, wherever you have that works, you go for it. So and I'll, now that's going to lead into the physical assets that you're going to need to run a session. Now, for physical assets, you're going to need, if you're not doing Theater of Mind, which most people, I mean, some people do Theater of Mind, some people, like, I, like, I prefer the grids, I like to do tactical things and big set pieces and that kind of stuff, but then sometimes I just draw on crayon, I just see, I saw my Enroll video, I literally just draw on a blank piece of paper with crayon as we go, and that's just as viable, but you need some kind of encounter map in your mind, how you're going to draw it, or sometimes you can draw it on graph paper ahead of time so you have a reference and then you're drawing it. Sometimes you can print out that. You can have a map online. You can print it out. There's ways to do that. I should probably make a video about the best way to do that because I use Excel and it's a whole. It comes out perfect every time. Um, or you're gonna need. So you're either gonna need a printed out map, a way to draw your map, dry erase whatever you got, whatever you got that you're gonna physically present your map to your people and, and the map in your head. How you're gonna get that onto that paper? And there's several ways to do that. We'll make other videos about that. Like I said, I sometimes have a graph paper reference to the map I'm going to draw. Sometimes it's just in my head. Sometimes I don't even, they're like on a Westmark, they're like, well, we're going to go east today. We're going to go past these cats, and we're going to go see what's beyond the forest. So I don't know what's there. They don't know what's there. I'll figure it out as they go. So when they get there, I'll take one of my three extra encounters that I have. I, when I go show up to Westmark, they usually have five encounters. I have all the directions and one extra because I don't know where they're going to go. So I need a little bit more ready to go. And the, the benefit of DMing so much and saving everything I ever do, I save it, so I always have a backup. So I can pull something out that I did 20 years ago. I'm not ready. So I'd say I'm not technically ready for what they did. I didn't prep for anything that they're doing. But 20 years ago, I had this idea we did, and it worked. And I'm like, well, I'm going to whip out that piece of paper from 3rd edition. I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to convert it to 5th edition really quick, which I can do. It's not that hard. 3rd edition and 5th edition are pretty congruent as far as a lot of the numbers and stuff. Then what you're going to need is your actual monster stat blocks. So you can get those out of the out of the monster manual anywhere. I always have a bunch going. I like to print them. I like to, to copy them or take a picture of them, put them in a paint or a, like a document, and I can edit them. I change the numbers. I sometimes I just sometimes I take the the plus bonuses and I, I erase them all based on my other video where I showed you how I manipulate all that stuff. So I'll print out the stat block, but I'll I'll take all the little numbers out. I'll leave them blank so I can just write them in the pencil. And then later, so, so I'm fighting a seventh level party today. I'm going to write their you know plus seven, plus seven, plus six, whatever I need. And then maybe two months later, I want to use this giant shark again that I printed out and kind of manipulated, but I'm facing a second level party. Like, well, I can always just erase those numbers and put in plus two, plus three, whatever I need that's going to base it on my, my new party to make that to make it a more viable combat using the same exact monster that I used up or down. So you can always, anything you do always is going to be used again, even if it's a different monster. So if you gave a shark a certain ability and now, oh, well, now I'm not using a shark today. I'm going to use a, a rhinoceros, but... Sharks still charge. Shark, rhinoceros can still poke you. So it's have a bite. It's a, it's a it's it's a it's a jab. You can use the same stats that you had your shark with, but make it relevant to a rhino. You can always you can always mix, manipulate that stuff. That's a whole other video with monster manipulation. But anyway, so then some other physical things you're gonna need are your depending on how many NPCs you're gonna have, you're gonna kind of want as much information on those as you need. Some DMs need a, like to have a whole diatribe of what each NPC can do in their their life and their this and that. To me, the more you have, the harder it is to present because you get kind of tripped up. It's like, oh, this guy has a whole big back history, but I only have like 30 seconds before my players just, just drone out. You go, well, this 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 gnome lives in the village of, you know, he's his his parents were were were, you know, wine makers, and now they're they've kind of came on hard times. So he grew up pretty poor, so he's got this, and you've already lost your players. We're just like, there's a gnome, he's got his 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 clothes are really fine but his shoes are kind of kind of worn down like he works really hard for his money that there's a there's, a, there's an npc right there in one sentence rather than going on forever and ever and you know so you need basically some very basic things about your npc i usually give an npc the actually the tables in the back of the dmg are great i don't i don't use a dmg for a lot but that's and i don't roll randomly but you can look at the traits and be like oh here's a human 
you, you meet a human. They're gonna be like, yeah, whatever, meet a human. But you meet a human who has a scar on his face, and he has his his hand kind of does this little twitch. That's all you need. That's an NPC right there. He's I mean, he may be the baker, he may be the, the sheriff, he may be the mayor. But you just gave him personality, something for them to remember. So it's and it's very well, that was three words. You can do it with three words. So just kind of get and the way you think about NPCs is why why is this NP, why are they interacting with this NPC? Is this NPC going to give them a quest? Are they trying to get information off of him, which may lead to a quest? Are they going to rob him? Are they going to ask him directions? Are they just going to ask him about the town? What information, why is this NPC here? What, what information are you going to give them? So it's good to have an informational NPC, a quest NPC, a conflict NPC, maybe an NPC who's in trouble that's not asking for help. But, you know, it's good to have a range of NPCs. I like to have... I, I, I just do it in my head. I've been DMing a long time, so I just kind of do it in my head. So that's my prep is a lot different than what a noob DM would be. But I would say have like five or six basic generic NPC ideas ready to go. And I just, honestly, for NPCs, I use the stat blocks in the of book that just like Thug and Bandit and uh, there's a bunch of them back there. And I just, I literally, I, I printed them out. I cut them up into little like little squares. I have a binder. So this is my binder. I just keep everything in here. And I have, like, so I have an Excel program I keep a lot of stuff in, but most of my physical stuff is in this binder. So what I do, as you can see, if I can show this without getting sued, see I just printed out all the little things. So I set them in these, these are baseball card things. It's for Pokemon. But like I can just pop this out of here. Boom. There's a spy in the back of the book. Right here is a bandit. It's a bandit from the back of the book. NPC, there's a stat. He's ready to go. Now, you really don't need NPC stats. That's why I just do it this way because you're not, it's point, the point of it is an NPC. You don't want to fight them. But sometimes your players just, they want to kill somebody. Or the guy looks at them the wrong way and they want to fight him. So it's good to have those ready to go, those little stat blocks. And like I said, you can just open up the back of the book and look at them. They're there. I like to print them out. I either take a picture of my cell phone and I put it in a paint and I manipulate it. Or you can find a PDF and just print it out from there. Whatever, there's ways to do that anyway. It's good to have that. And also, in that same in this same binder, as you'll see in the back, I have like, probably can't, I don't know if it'll show up on camera because the lights are super bright. But see, I have just everything I, every little monster I use, I print out and I put it in these little pen flex things. So I have like Gith, I have, you know, I have a whole bunch of elementals, I have dryads, I have a face spider. I have all kinds of things from all kinds of books, you know, and I just kind of keep them in here and I have them. I probably should make a reference sheet to them so I know what I have. Sometimes I end up, oh, I need a, I need a water elemental. I'm going to print that out. And then I go to my, I put it in my binder. I'm like, oh, I already printed out water elemental twice before, two years ago, and I forgot. So it's good to have a list. I don't have a list right now. Maybe I should organize myself before I tell you guys how to organize. But yeah, but that binder, I can literally show up to your house with this binder and my dice any night and run a game. I don't, I don't need anything else. Everything I need to run a game is in this little binder. It's every game that I've run in the last year and a half I'd say is in this binder all the monsters everything is in here I have I have a folder for each uh, for each game you know I have a you know and I have I have, actually have I have folders in here I should get rid of them. I don't run those games anymore but uh, so that is my so actually like I said as you DM more and more you're gonna build that up you're gonna build this up so you have that you're gonna start with nothing and you're gonna soon have this you're gonna have so many encounters and monsters that you've run if you remember them if you keep track of them and write little notes you'll always have them so if you're running for a different group or even for the same group you can run I ran an octopus against you well now it's three years later it's a different game now you're fighting a squid it's not much different it's a totally different encounter totally different world totally different thing the stats are all the same so the prep the prep I already did. I already did the prep once. Every time you prep a monster once, you've always got that monster prepped. Which is how. So now I always have. So I always have the rule of three, which I have. I have more than three because I have that whole binder ready to go. But I still add to it every time. I always do three more. So I'm just adding and adding and adding. It's not universal. Some people need a lot more prep. Some people like to improv. Some people like to have everything to go. If you're running a module, it's pretty much already there for you. Your prep is going to be reading, reading and reading and reading. I don't run modules. I think running a module is way harder than running your own homebrew. That's just me personally, because to me, if, I mean, if people that run modules, I respect them because everyone says, like, oh, modules are for people that don't have any, no, it's harder to run a module. Because if somebody asks you a question and you're running a module, you have to be like, oh, I have to look in the module to answer that question. How do I know? Whereas I'm just making stuff up myself. If you ask me a question, I just think, well, what is, I know the answer. I'm going to make the answer up as you ask me, or I know it already from my world building. 
but I'll say, oh, well, what, is this, what does this NPC know about that in my head? And I'll be like, oh, well, the answer is this. I just make it up. And then I note that down. It's made up. I don't have to reference anything. So I find, I find homebrew to be less prep, not more prep, which sounds crazy because you're making it up all yourself. But the benefit of that is you're making it up all yourself and you have the answer. You can make it up a week before or you can make it up at the, at the table. There's literally no difference other than usually the longer you have to think about stuff, the better you can make it. But then, I mean, I've had games that ran completely by the seat of my pants and they were great. The sessions were great. And you just never know. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you can prepare all week and your session still crashes. And sometimes you prepare and it comes out great. Sometimes you don't prepare and it just works. Everything just works. You're just kind of, you're on and just, just you know. So prep is a very subjective thing. Not objective. It's very subjective. So, yeah, so sort of prep. So when you're thinking about prepping for your session, remember to have twofold. Have your ideas and your physical assets. So ideas are your locations, your NPCs you're going to need to get your encounters across, those actual encounters that you're going to have, the ideas and what, you know, think about the three different directions they can go from where they are, kind of base your encounters on that. If you don't use the other, you're only going to use one. If you don't use the other two, well, you have those. You have those ready for another game or for next time, or you can just always, then you make your next one, you have the other two. Always have three ahead. If you always have three ahead, it's, it's a lot of prep in the beginning. Like your first probably month of DMing this way will be a little rough because you're, you're, trying to get ahead, you're trying to get ahead, you're trying to get ahead. As you DM, like I said, over, over, I've been DMing for 5th edition for about three years, pretty hardcore now, I started with 5th edition, and I mean, I have, that's, that's just 5th edition, and if I showed you my Excel sheets from 3rd edition and 2nd edition, well, 2nd edition, I had, I had nothing, 2nd edition I ran back in the 90s, I have nothing from that, because my, my house burned in 93, so I have nothing older than that. But um, I have all my third edition stuff, I have run, I ran a lot of elaborate games. I have all the Excel sheets, all the maps, all the stats. I have everything I've ever ran in third edition, I have still, and I can use that. Everything you ever do, if you keep it, will always be ready. So you're always, there's preparation and there's being prepared. But it's kind of a two different things when you're running a session. Preparation is what you're doing. Being prepared is, is you being prepared to run. Yeah, so you have your locations, your NPCs, your encounter ideas, Maybe the environments you're going to need, the goals of those encounters. Like I said, two to six monsters. If you run all day and you're going to have three combats, well, I would prep six encounters because then you're three ahead. You have three to go. You have three ahead. And then the benefit, the other benefit of the, of the three ahead, say you're running, say you have a, a rough week. You have to run on Sunday and you have a rough week and you just haven't had any time to prepare and you've got players coming and they want something to do. Because you're three encounters ahead, you're all ready to go. You just use those three encounters. You kind of fudge it and make, put them in your game, find a narrative way to put those encounters in your game, and you're okay. You are pre you did not prep at all, but you are prepared to run a game when the players show up. Then you have your physical things you're going to need to prep, which are your actual encounter maps or the, the, the system you're going to use to present your encounter maps. If you want to have minis or whatever, that's, that's a whole other... That's not really part of prep. That's just what you have to work with. Um... It's good to have graph paper references. It's good to have notes. That, but now some DMs need a lot of notes. Some do not. I just kind of have little bullet points. I'll show you. I'll show. You. This is the, I, I put my stuff on clipboard. So here's a typical game. That's these are my players' stats and stuff that I need. This is this is not a good one. I only run three. And these are just the basic notes that I have right here. The, the, the environment. These are the people they're going to meet, and these are the things that they're going to find. That's literally that's it. That's all I have ready for that session that we just ran. And it, I've run two sessions off that much information. That's all you need. And I'll, I'll put a better picture of this up there um, and show you some of my, some of my battle sheets and, and how I do that. Uh, physical things, monster stats, stat blocks. Like I said, I like to print them out. I have my DM screen. I have a DM screen that's kind of off at the side of me when I DM, and I hang the monster stats from it. Like, that's how I do And I have my clipboard. I keep track of everything on my clipboard. I'll show you I'll show you my battle sheets. So I'll take a picture of those battle sheets and put them over on the, on the thing over here. Because I have a little sheet that I make and I keep track of hit points and spells and all that stuff. It's a super streamlined way to keep track of everything in the game. Um, and then you're going to need your NPC, so physical things. You're going to need NPC traits and stat blocks. Like I said, I would use the, the basic spy, bandit, thug. You can use, they're, they're, they're universal. NPCs are not supposed to be interacted with greatly. Now, if you want to make a more potent NPC who's like a villain, that's something different. That's Then you're making a stat block for a villain. Don't ever, don't don't give villains player character classes. That's a waste of time. It's fun and it's cool. Oh, I'm gonna make my my I'm gonna make my villain a, a monk. Well, that's cool, but you do not you do not need to make a PC monk to run as a, as an enemy. You just think about well, what can a monk do? What are the abilities I want the monk of the monk? But I want my villain to have and just give your villain those abilities. But he can he can do a stunning strike. He can do extra attack. He can do all these things. 
I don't need a whole PC to do that. It's still the same stat block. It's just I have the abilities. Because why run a PC when you can literally run a, a stat block this big? That's all you need. You need the, you need the basic stats. You don't PCs need that big sheet because they have all these powers. They have all these lives that they're dealing with. All these different parameters. The leveling up. They they need to that that sheet is going to be with them from level one to ten. Whereas a monster sheet is going to be with you for twenty minutes to an hour at, before they slaughter it. Maybe it's a recurring villain. You might need a little bit more, but either way, you're only going to need its basic stats. And then, like I said, three ahead. And then after you have all that, once you have all these, this is the mechanical stuff you're going to need to play your game. This is mechanical things that you as a DM need to be prepared for to handle in the game. Now, on top of that, now, is going to be your storytelling, your world building, all that jazz. We'll do a whole other video on that. When you're prepping, don't worry about that. Worry about your table. Once you've got your table set up and what, what am I going to give the players to do, the world building and the storytelling will do it. It'll, it'll it'll work itself out. You're gonna you're gonna do you can do that on your own. You can be like relax. I got I got my session ready. Now, how do I base this session that I've prepared? All these things that I my ideas and my physical stuff. How do I make that fit my story? Fit my world building that I've done? How do I put them together? Because you're gonna be free to do that because your session's already done. You can just think about ideas and story now narrative because the tech is all done. So. I hope that video helps. Uh, this is this is basically a minimal prep. I'm going to do some videos about how I prep an encounter, how I run an encounter. You'll see with on uh, our gameplay videos how I do all, all my encounters. Kind of have one or two different things going on at once. I like to keep the players guessing. I don't. I don't. I like to keep the terrain as part of the session. Remember, there's a huge difference between preparing and being prepared. That's that's a huge difference there that people kind of overlook. Like, I'm going to prepare. I'm going to prepare. I'm not prepared enough to run this game. I'm, I've been prepping, but I'm not prepared. Well, I don't have to prep. I'm always prepared. Because I, I mean, I do prep. Obviously, I'm running five games. I have to stay ahead of them. I'm always prepping for something. But I'm not... Usually, I'm, pre usually I'm prepping for the next game. That's two weeks from go. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a week ahead because I'm so far ahead. And if I get to a Sunday and people are coming and I'm not ready, I'll... I mean, you, I have two huge games that I have to be ready for. They're, they're massive story-driven... I, I don't want to say on rails, but they're, they're linear stories. So I have to be ready for those. I do a little bit more prep work for those. I have some West Marches that I run that I literally just show up. I have ideas and the world, they build the world. So it's, I, I literally just show up with my three encounters, my, my monsters, my, my, you know, my three plus monsters and my uh, maps in my head. And we just go from there. Yeah, that's my video on preparation. I hope that helps you guys. Any questions or comments, you know, throw them in the down below. Um, I'm happy to, you know, be more specific or, you know, respond to any, 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 any uh, actual, like, any questions you're having or problems that you're having with your encounters, you know, you know, shoot me, a, shoot me a line. I, I prep a lot, so I could probably, I've probably run into a problem that you're running into. I've probably run into it before, and I've probably found a way around it, or I know somebody else that found a way around it. I could lead to them. So we are Omniverse Gamers, you know, like, subscribe, all that jazz. We're trying to keep this channel growing and trying to get, you know, as much information as we can out to the, out to the multiverse and you guys. And uh, so you can just run better games. Uh, so have a great day, and I'll keep. I'll see you soon, and keep on gaming.